morning. morning. Our scripture reading is from Luke 1, verses 26 through 35. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favorite one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and, his king, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. This ends our reading. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, our God, we worship and we praise you for this day, for this opportunity to be together during this time of Advent as we await the coming of your Son, Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to be in worship. Thank you for forgiveness of sins. Thank you for the gift of music. Thank you for the light of candles and lights that remind us of Jesus, the light of the world. And thank you for your word. May your spirit enlighten our hearts and our minds to now receive the message that you have for us. We pray that you will bless us. In the name of Jesus, amen. So the opening lines to uh, William Chatterton Dix's famous Christmas carol ask an important question. It says, what child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? So it's almost Christmas, as you know, and during this Advent season, we've been asking the question, what child is this? I mean, who is this child that was born on Christmas Day? It's a question people have asked over the ages. It's a question many, many people still ask today. And so we've looked at the story of the shepherds during the first Sunday of Advent, and we've looked at the story of the wise men last week and what we can learn about this child. But today we're going to focus on Mary. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Dix goes on to answer part of that question in the last line of his repeated chorus. This child is the babe, the son of Mary. So the angel told Mary, don't be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. When the angel said this to Mary, I mean, she was a little perplexed, to say the least. How? How will this be? How can this even happen? How can I have a baby because I'm a virgin? So the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. And when the baby was born, she gave him the name Jesus. And the name Jesus means the Lord is salvation. And like with any other child, he had characteristics and uh, attributes of both the mother and the father. I mean, when someone looks at your child, if you have a kid, they can probably see some 
features and qualities of both the parents. And the same was true for Jesus. But what was conceived in Mary was not from man, but rather from the Holy Spirit of God. And it says in John 4, 24, that God is spirit. And this is what Hebrews 1, verse 3 says about this child that was born in the manger in Bethlehem. The Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God and he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. So like your child would mirror some of your characteristics and attributes, Jesus reflects the glory of God, the very character of God, and he shows us exactly what God is like. And so what child is this? Well, he's fully God. He's God in the flesh. He was conceived in the womb of Mary by way of the Holy Spirit. He was fully God, but he was also fully human. He was the Son of God, but he was also the Son of Mary. And that's why it says in Philippians chapter 2, Christ himself was like God in everything. In other words, fully God. But he did not think that being equal with God was something to be used for his own benefit. He gave up his place with God and made himself nothing. He was born as a man and became like a servant. In other words, he was fully human. And when he was living as a man, he humbled himself and was fully obedient to God even when that caused his death, death on a cross. So there are reflections and attributes in Jesus' life that display God the Father. And there are reflections from Mary's life that we see in Jesus that helps us understand more about what child this is. And what we see in the Gospels is is how Jesus deals with people, especially children. He deals with them with compassion, with patience, with tenderness. He values the children. He treats those on the margins of life with dignity. He reaches out and blesses them with appropriate and meaningful touch. And what we see in Jesus is how he displays compassion and patience and tenderness, characteristics that were part of Mary, who was a woman and a mother. What child is this? He grew up to show care and compassion to others just like his mother displayed to him. You know, we talk about God the Father much. But there are also descriptions of God in the Bible that include motherly language and imagery. For instance, God says, I will comfort you as a mother comforts a child. I think most of us can think of a time when, when we needed some comfort when you needed someone to cheer you up and encourage you. And many of us were blessed to have a, a mother who was there to give us exactly that. And so God says, I will comfort you as a mother comforts her child. So those of you who are mothers, you know what a special bond there is between you and the child that you brought into this world. So keep that in mind when you listen to what God says to us. Could a mother forget a child who nurses at her breast? Could she fail to love an infant who came from her own body? Even if a mother could forget, I will never forget you. So 
So you see there's a special, special bond between God and his children. And he promises that he will never forget you. In the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus longs for the people of Jerusalem, he compares himself as a mother hen longing to gather her chicks under her wings. He says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers, how often I've wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. So these verses describe the nature and the character of God. They describe the nature and the character of Jesus. The characteristics of a mother like Mary. Let's fast forward some 30 years, 30 plus years. The child has grown into a, an, an adult man. And a prophecy is coming true. What the Christmas carol is describing in the second stanza is becoming a reality. Nails, spears shall pierce him through the cross he bore for me, for you. Hail, hail, the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. Jesus is in agony, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. He's hanging on a cross and he's about to complete his mission. He's on the verge of fulfilling the reason he was born into our world at Christmas. And if you're a parent, I want you to think about a time when your child was in pain, when he or she was going through a very, very difficult time. But it was not just difficult for them, right? It was difficult for you too. Your child in pain just tears your heart out, doesn't it? The struggles and stuff that cause you to find it difficult to sleep at night. Because your child's pain is really your pain too. And when your child is suffering, you are suffering with him or her. Because of your love for them, their hurt is your hurt. So can you just for a moment imagine what Mary was going through at this moment? The pain she was suffering as she was watching a son die in agony on the cross. And yet she was there for him in that moment. She was standing right there at the foot of the cross. She was present in his pain. She was present in her own pain. And so what we witness is, in this moment, is that Jesus' mother would never leave him or forsake him, especially not in his hour of need. And so it's also a trait we see so powerfully represented in Jesus he reminds us that he's always with us. One of his names is Emmanuel. The God is with us. He's always with us. Even in our deepest pain and our darkest hour. Especially in our aching and our suffering. And so he makes a very comforting promise to you and me. He says, I will be with you always even until the end of the world. I will never leave you or forsake you. And so here at the end of his life, Mary, his mother, is near him. She's right by his side. And what we see here is a very powerful scene of compassion and care between Mary and Jesus. She's there near him to comfort him and support him. And we see the compassion that Jesus has for his mother. It says in John 19, when Jesus saw his mother and his favorite disciple with her, he said to his mother, this man is now your son. And then he said to the disciple, she is now your mother. And from then on, 
that disciple took her into his own home. And it's a beautiful picture of love and of compassion. Evil, even while he hung there dying, he makes sure that his mom is taken care of in his absence. And so what child is this? Who did he grow up to be? He's Jesus. He's the one who loves others and loved his family to the very end. Selfless, sacrificing beyond measure, kind and considerate even when experiencing his worst day in the worst way. The one who came willingly to suffer and die so we can become family, so we can be cared for too and have provision through his death and because of his life, because not only was this child the one who was born in the manger in Bethlehem, but also he would be the firstborn from the dead. And his rebirth, his resurrection, gives you and me the opportunity to be reborn and to be saved from our sins. Just as his mother Mary came to understand. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for his compassion, for his care. Thank you for Mary who brought him into this world. And thank you that he was fully God and also fully human, that he experienced every pain we can ever imagine or experience ourselves. And so when we remember the birth of Christ, may we also remember that he grew up to sacrifice himself for the forgiveness of our sins. So we give you glory and praise for that today. In his name, amen.